the fallen idols tell a story. The grand cuteness was shattered. In our home, across the fog, the lands be teach. Now, Queen Merica Kubashi is nowhere to be found. And in the night of 1800s Victorian era France, a beautiful woman is born. Soon, Lord Raku's offspring, Joshi's all, flame the shards of the grand cuteness. Their mad adorableness triggered a newfound world of zany cuteness and lion spirits. A war from which no princesses emerged. A war leading to sleepy time by Elden God Raku. Rise now, ye weeps, ye dead who yet live. The call of the seven day Wrestle Universe free trial speaks to us all. Shoko Nakajima, the big kaiju. The ever magical girl, Yuka Sakazaki. Yuka Tatsumi, the white dragon. The lonesome Dongita. And Yamashita Miu, the Askipa. And one more star from the beginning. So join in this adventure now, as your friendly neighborhood meerkat, no, your friendly Aristocat Ultra, finally crosses the fog into the world of TJPW, as we study not a career history, but rather a mere introduction to Saki Akai, but more specifically, the woman who looks just like her but absolutely 100% is not Sakisama. So she who will cleanse the world of Tej of its ugliness. Saki Akai was a model and an actor before being lured into the world of professional wrestling in 2011, being trained by Cherry and Masa Takanashi and debuting in Emi Sakura's Ice Ribbon promotion. She would eventually sign with the new sub-brand of DDT, Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling, in 2013 and joined DDT as their only full-time woman in the promotion. Her father was a professional boxer and Saki seemingly followed the journey into the world of pro wrestling, combining her physical prowess and her acting talent. She is known for her tall, slender size, her gorgeous, gorgeous model looks, for being the queen of pinfalls, literally the queen of it, literally went viral because of it. Saki Akai is indeed 
beautiful, but in the ring, she is a talented striker who had to further develop her own style in order to battle the men of DDT and gain their respect. When she won the Rookie of the Year award in 2014, she was bashed online and criticized for being a woman. Thus, Saki worked tirelessly to improve and be seen as an equal, but also felt pressure to continuously look beautiful to present herself as best as possible around these men who are quite pretty in their own right. But she indeed proved herself against Chris Brooks in 2021 in a match that Brooks wanted to be a normal singles match, no gimmick as an excuse to why Chris gets beat up by a woman, just equal skills. And Saki brought it to Chris. Look at this move and this, and Chris equally killed her as well. Although she lost, Chris gave her the respect she was looking for. In an interview, Saki Akai would say how this moment meant a lot to her, and indeed, you can see it here. That leads me to my next point. Saki Akai has been in movies, like this movie here. I don't know why she has red eyes, I didn't watch it. Or this movie, where she plays a blue ninja with super strength. Saki is a great theatric actor in the ring, and that's always, always my favorite bit about a wrestler, how good you are in between the moves and emoting. Saki passes my arbitrary test with flying colors, because she has had quite the unique career. Saki Akai is a much more serious fighter, proving her worth to the world and showing she can hang with the men, forming her own trio with two other men called Eruption, but she can play other characters because, again, She's a good actress. These three characters. Wait, they're the same person? Yeah, and 311 was an inside job. Investigate 311. Let's take Saki. This tall demon of evil beauty. Teaming with Su Young. This oh most perfect tag team. I just need Rosemary and Abaddon and screw it. Dark Alexa Bliss, give me what I want! Give Dark me what I want! There's lore to this creature too, because this isn't Saki Akai, but rather her relative. However, this is the first time she has ever appeared in public. Before her appearance, Saki was married to a Japanese soldier who died on the final day of World War II. Stricken with grief, Saki secluded herself in the Kyoto Mountains. Somehow, her seclusion left her immortal. Possibly because she's a demon? But there's no proof. No proof at all. I mean, this is also me at 3 a.m. in the morning writing this script. I got that lore from a blog post. I don't know if it's accurate, but you know what's dark about that implication? The final days of World War II was sparked by the final event that led to Japan's surrender. The atomic bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Now Saki is a demon. Put two and two together, and we have political commentary fighting warrior of beauty or a demonic bereaved wraith you'd find in Fatal Frame. While in TJPW, a strange occurrence happens every season where a complete doppelganger of Saki Akai appears in Tiege, along with a group of French servants in court, and it's strange as heck because this woman is not Saki Akai. But Saki Akai is known to be a big fan of hers. No, this is Saki-sama. This French aristocrat. This beautiful elite obsessed with beauty, especially in victory. She is either immortal or literally from 1800s France, or somehow crossed the fog into modern day TJPW. But Saki-sama is here to rid the company of its ugliness. And who better than this beauty? This tall, gorgeous woman will do it with one of my favorite moves in wrestling now. The most deadly, deadly rose slap. She wrestles a style of beauty in itself where the impact is less important than how good you look doing it. And oh, she looks so good. She looks damn good. And she knows it. Look at her be Sharon Stone. Her tall, lanky size lends itself over these smaller Joshis, utilizing her long legs to her advantage. And she admittedly looks incredible doing them. I mean, look at her. That's sexy. I'm not being perverted. It just is. And she knows it. She knows exactly what she 
she's doing, and that is the point. She is a villain dominating over cuteness, and that has been her career. From when I've been able to gather, Saki-sama and her stable of aristocratic evil, Neo Bishiki Gun, are the only villains in this company, and they are seasonal, so it makes the company almost like a series, where things are fun and cute and intense, with combative in-ring action, with personal drama stemming from relationships, then this tall, dark, and beautiful woman of French culture comes in and starts a <laughs> beautiful disaster. It's wonderful. And dominate she does, if not with her size and skills, then with her stablemates blatantly cheating. Her group had many incarnations, even all appearing at once. She has an eight-year-old boy, a surgeon who injects people with syringes, a nun, even a superhero like Hyper Masao shed her costume once and joins Hakasama to grow stronger, only to rediscover the hero within herself. And even one day, while playing the flute in the woods, captured a wild May Saint Michelle and trained her to be her battle maid. She has won the Prince's Tag Titles three times with three different people, inspiring Sakura Akai to also win the princess titles in Tiege and was also recently defeated in singles action by longtime rival Miyu Yamashita. But that is not what interested me right away. No, it's your entire aesthetic. Saki-sama comes out to the theme song to the classic anime, The Rose of Versailles, based on the manga by Ryoko Ikeda. It's an entire vibe based on French vibes popularized during the 70s, and her inspiration to sort of cosplay as an evil version of this is more than just surface level observation. In fact, I was going to dive into this because it interested me, but the parallels of the Rose of Versailles themes concurrent with Japanese culture, 1970s feminism, shoujo manga, and the French Revolution with Saki Akai's entire career is quite life imitating art. It's a groovy time for a movie time. So grab your gap and grab a seat. And now, Aristocat Ultra presents a brief history lesson missing tons of goddamn nuance and facts from two hours of Google. To best explain it, we shall be using. Mina Shirakawa! Oh, hi, Mina! She used to rap and tease like. <laughs> Will Mina be like. Socialism be like. Yo, Japan, you suck. You gotta change, yo. You gotta change. I'm gonna beat your ass, yo. But peacefully, in Japan, like, suck a dick. So the new left formed in universities, but many factions broke out, and they like. They ended up like fighting each other, like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. But one organized into massive university protests that similarly happened around the world, and one gigantic fuck vibe that the current world was experiencing, but things calmed down, so the United Red Army formed and shit got real, 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 real fast, and this culminated in the Asama Mountain Lodge incident of 1972. The fleeing Red Army members took a woman hostage in the lodge, and for six, six, six days, they held up from the police until, on the final day, a ten-hour siege of fuck you took place that was broadcast live in Japan's first marathon television broadcast. The result was the the death of two officers and many injured. Safe to say, this left the new left left behind in the halls of history. <laughs> now look how many cute things you can buy in Japan. It's so so cute. Look how cute they are. <laughs> Thank you for explaining socialism, Mina Shirakawa. Why am I talking about this? Because the new left movement was partly inspired by the ideals of the French Revolution, and it was this new left movement that inspired a college attending Ryoko Ikeda before the ideology died out, and she moved on to her career in manga. But the influence remained as she wanted to create a story during the French Revolution, specifically about Maria Antoinette. She was in high school when she conceived the title, The Rose of Versailles. As her career in manga starts, Akita eventually proposed her story to the editors and began publishing in 1972 in the weekly magazine, Margaret. Inspired by the movement happening around her with the new left, she decided to use themes of revolution and populist uprising in the story of this French Revolution manga forming a full thematic circle of influence. The French Revolution influencing the ideals of the new left, which inspired Akita to use the same themes in her story on the French Revolution. 
its main character was Maria Antoinette, who mirrored Japanese culture of feminism at the time. We had this woman who was insubordinate to the patriarchal system, who had a dull, loveless marriage, was hated by the public, and could do nothing to combat the social systems of the time due to her obligations as a queen and a mother, and was beheaded. Paralleling this is Japanese feminism caught in the eternal conflict of social change against the dominant paradigm of masculinity, but also honoring the cultural and social expectation of motherhood. This series grew into a hit, and the focus of the story shifted from Maria Antoinette to Lady Oscar, and this shift turned out to influence far more than expected. Oscar was the last of six daughters of the commander of the royal guards, and with no one to succeed him as commander, Oscar was instead raised as a man. So when she took over the royal guard, she was placed with protecting Maria Antoinette, and the series takes off. Despite her appearance in men's clothes and her deliberate androgyny, Oscar is openly a woman, but doesn't want to be seen fully as a woman, nor does she want to be seen fully as a man. Indeed, she rejected a woman on the basis of them being women, yet was rejected by a male because she couldn't see her as anything but a man, and despite her arranged marriage because he refused to see her as anything but a woman. Ultimately, her love interest, Andre, her childhood friend, and a sensitive man who was in silent love with Oscar throughout the series, is of a lower status and emasculated as a servant, but they both share an infamous night of passion together in a relationship where gender was a non-discussion. Eventually, tying back to her original inspirations of the rise of the populace, Oscar realizes the corruption of royalty and joins the people to rebel. Lady Oscar was inspired by Takarazuka Levu. I think I'm pronouncing that right, I don't know. The all-women theater troupe that started in the early 1900s, where women played the male roles for the entirety of their careers, as well as the Princess Knight, an early example of androgyny in manga. Once again, going full circle, Rose of Versailles would eventually inspire Takarazuka would eventually inspire Takarazuka into a full production of Akita's work in 1974. The play would prove so popular amongst women and its influence spread like... Honestly, once I learned about Ryoko Akita, the Rose of Versailles, and its influence on not just shoujo manga, but Japanese culture, it clicked because I love Malice Miser, and now that's all I see. An anime was also produced with this classic yet haunting theme song that goes like... <laughs> I didn't watch it all, but it is very beautiful to look at, and I cannot believe it's the 70s, beyond the themes of sexuality and gender, or the political introspection in the latter half. The show is just good writing in general. From what I've seen, I like it a lot. You can find it on Prime. Now, where were we? Oh, I'm so sorry, Sakasama. Oh no, I have not forgotten about you. No, not forget. I was just... I'm sorry! Now, how does this relate to Sakisama? Well, here's where I once again remind you that this is but a mere interpretation. First off, her theme song. Yeah, it's the theme song to Rosa Versailles, the whole of Neo Bishiki Gun, all the French royal elites. Their fashion, the roles, very Takarazuka inspired, Sakisama's matches being little one act plays in themselves. But the comparison kind of ends there, as so precious little of Sakisama's gimmick actually seemingly fits the Rosa Versailles, beyond the roles she uses herself, of course. But to my surprise, the parallels between the two do exist. But we have to break kayfabe. Saki Akai, daughter of a professional boxer, the only full-time female in DDT. The promotion dominated by men, fighting men, developing her own style, while struggling with the conflict of her remaining beautiful for the company to retain her womanhood. That's Oscar. Fighting to be seen as an equal while being able to express her individual autonomy. As Sakisama, her entire royal court can be seen as the aristocratic corrupt elite of Versailles, simplified and taken to an extreme form of theatric anime. She wants to rid the world of ugliness. She is no Oscar. There is no Oscar in this tale, just her Academy Award kick. No, all the themes of femininity, sexuality, gender, all the lore are spotted out, the roles of Versailles, the uprising of the populace, the androgynous theater, everything becomes so simplified that that just seems satirical. This is just my take, and I'm for sure probably wrong, but my whole reasoning for doing this video is, once again, we come full circle. 
Look at it this way. The French Revolution leads to an uprising of the populace, the abolition of feudalism, and the beginning of the modern world as we know it, issuing us ideas of liberalism, nationalism, socialism, and consumerism over a hundred years past, and in Japan, an all-women's theater troupe attracted women audiences to popular demand with their portrayals of gender roles and sexuality, often leaving them fan mail from female fans, and led to much controversy over homosexual relationships within the troupe. Sixty years passed, and the ideals of the French Revolution and French philosophy inspired the new left movement of Japan, whose initial ideas attracted author Ryoko Ikeda, who was inspired by the French Revolution and the androgyny of the all-women's theater, to write the Rose of Versailles, to also parallel Japan's own political and cultural themes, expectations in all regards, be it political or gender, which inspired the original theater troupe to base a show off the manga, the resulting influence of culture eventually landing in the hands of Saki-sama in the form of a rose. And she just slaps bitches with it. Again, other than coming out to the theme song of Rosa Versailles, this really just be nonsense. She just could just... She could just like the song, man. <laughs> Regardless, Saki-sama's vibe spoke this whole nonsense to me, and this mere observation took nearly 3,000 words to write. For this, I thank thee, Saki-sama. This beautiful, tall, gorgeous, and tall, and terrific performer in the world of TJPW, but also thank you, Saki Akai, and her wonderful performance of a career. Saki Akai announced her retirement, and Saki-sama will return to Tij to team with Mei St. Michelle, possibly for the final time. I have no basis for saying that, though. Saki-sama doesn't care if Saki Akai retired, because Saki-sama will live forever in her French chateau, a world without ugliness, eternal beauty. Turn me loose from your hands, let me fly to distant lands, over green fields, trees and Special thank you to all my Patreon sponsors for voting and supporting this video, especially to Adam K for suggesting this video that led me down to this deep dive to begin with. We have Jeff, the Up Channel Geek and Noah's Dad, Anthony, Kopi, Tease, Renee, Asa, Trace, Maddox, Justin, Matthew, Neil, John, Terrence, Danwick, Edward, Kep, Mullen, Adam K, Ray, Glorious, Royals, Party, Marty, Punkwicks, Videos, Mina Shabakawa, Boobas, Benji, Dr. Enzig, Juggernaut Graphics, Polar Bear, Shutter Bingo, Ash, McGee, Boggle, Chicken, and my newest one, James, 198X. And thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Till next time.